Okay, so this this next section, um, we're looking at it. We, we, we now have graphing calculators that can do amazing things for us. But this is more of an appreciation of mathematical history. And this is what this is the way that uh, Sir Isaac Newton, it's a method that he created to approximate zeros. Uh, and, and, it, and it uses local linearization as the, the core to doing that. I want us to, to know how to do this, even though we can now have calculators that would find this for us. Um, so here's how it works. He said, given some function, if I want to find the zeros, um, first of all, you need to have some understanding of what the function looks like. So he understands, and, and we could too, uh, that a, a trinomial, sorry, not a trinomial, a cubic is going to have this general shape. Uh, and, and by sort of general plug and chug, we can get that there's going to be a zero in between negative 1 and 16. And, and why do we know that there's a zero in between them? Um, well, we know that f of 2 is a negative number f of 3 is a positive number. So the inter intermediate value theorem is going to say that for some values, there's going to be some x between 2 and 3 uh, such that um, f of x equals 0. So we're going to have a 0 there. And, and the method is this. Find, use the intermediate value intermediate value theorem to capture a range for which the zero is between. We've done that. Um, the, the zero is going to be between two and three. And clearly, because um, negative one is closer to zero than 16, we're going to say uh, let x equal two to approximate the zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a local linearization. We're going to make a line around x equals 2. And we're going to use that line to approximate the real 0. So let's think about that. Um, to, to make a line around x equals 2, we know that we have the point 2 comma negative 1. And to find the slope, we're going to have to find the derivative of my function. Well, this is a nice, simple polynomial, 3x squared minus 2. And we want to find that derivative at x equals 2. So we get that it equals 10. So my equation uh, for my line around x equals 2 is 10 times x minus 2 minus 1. And I want to find the 0 for that function. So to find the 0 of this function, I want to know, I want to use this line. And so, you know, again, we've got some line that looks, you know, like that. And, and, and what our line can do is our line is approximating the curve. So our line's going to do a very good job of, of approximating the curve. So what we want to do is find the zero of this line. So I want to find what makes my linearization, what makes my line equal zero. So plug in zero, and I get 10 x minus 2 minus 1. If I solve that, I get 1 equals 10 over x minus 2. Simplifying that even further, I get 1 over 10 plus 2 equals x. And this is my, this is my better approximation of the zero. So my, I'm guessing that my zero now is 2.1. Now is it exactly 2.1? Uh, I don't think so. And you know, we could just confirm that really quickly on the graphing calculator that it's not exactly 2.1. This is sort of cheating. They didn't have calculators back then, but you know, if I did 2.1 cubed minus 2 times 2.1 minus 5, does this equal 0? Not exactly. Um, but 2.1 uh, is certainly closer than 2. You know, if I had just put in 2, uh, 
this value is much closer to zero than that one. So then we create what's called a, we start what's called a recursive process. So the recursive process looks like this. Now we set, we're going to say, let's set our line around 2.1, our new zero. So we put our line around 2.1. So what we need to find is we need to find a point. So 2.1 comma our y value. Well, we, we, we just found that y value. So let's, let's use it. Um, our y value is 0 0.061. And then um, we need to find a new slope. Well, our new slope, given our slope equation, f prime of 2.1 equals 3 times 2.1 squared minus 2. Um, I'm going to enlist a little calculator help here. So 3 times 2.1 squared minus 2. We get our slope is 11.23. So my new line, um, my new linear approximation around 2.1 is 11.23 times x minus 2.1 plus my y value, where my y value is 0 0.061. And again, we found that y value, going back to my calculator, we found that y value here by putting 2.1 into the function. Okay, so that's, um, this is my new linear approximation. And what do I do with that? Well, I, remember, I'm trying to find zeros. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to find a zero of, of that line. So now we got a new page to make it more clear. But so now we're going to find a zero with this. So we want to set. Um, function equal to zero to find out the x value that makes it zero. And then we go ahead and we and we move this over. So minus 0 0.061 and divide by 11.3 or 11.23 and add over. And this equals my new approximation for the zero. And then I'm going to use this. I'm going to make a line centered at x equals that value. And I keep going, and I keep going, and I keep going. And eventually, I'm going to get down to a very close approximation. Um, so let's just show how close this, this is. So this value um, that I approximated is... Um, negative point oh six one divided by eleven point two three plus two point one, so roughly two point oh nine four, whatever that value is, two point oh nine something. And if I put that function, um, the original function, into my y equation, so let's go back a page. Let's put this function in here. We've got x cubed minus 2x minus 5. And I want to find that 0 that's, right, that's going to be right around there. So Newton obviously didn't have a graphing calculator. We can find it very quickly. Um, but what we're learning, what we're, we're learning right now is the, the methods, that, the historical methods for finding the zeros. Um, so we get 2.09455 is the zero where we predicted it to be. We predicted, so we predicted it to be, let's see, um, 2.09455. So very, very close. Here's what we predicted it to be. Um, versus what we found earlier. So that's um, that's pretty cool. And this process, we can define recursively. 
Uh, but before we do that, before I say, you know, define what recursive is and, and define the recursive process, let's do it just one more time. So it says in exercise 10 to 14, so this is like the problems you're going to be doing in class. So in this problem, uh, we're going to do five iterations, um, starting off with x equals 1. So that's, we're going to say x equals 1 is my approximation for the 0. And we're going to try to approximate what that 0 actually is. So here's, I mean, first of all, clearly, here's x equals 1. Clearly, that's not the 0. It's probably some somewhere close to 1 half. Um, but to do this, we're going to say we've got the point 1 comma f of 1. And f of 1 is 3 minus 2 minus 4. So 1 comma negative 3. Yep. And here's my point. And my slope, well, f prime of x equals 6x minus 2, and I'm looking for my slope at 1. So f prime of 1 equals putting 1 in 4. So my first linear approximation, um, or my first local line, uh, will be 4 times x minus 1 minus 3. And I want to find out when is that 0. So if I plug 0 in and then solve it we get 3 fourths moving the 3 over dividing by 4 plus 1 equals x so we're getting that x equals 1.75 that's my first approximation for the 0 then what do I do well now I'm going to plug in again so I'm going to plug in the point I'm going to get my point 1.75 comma f of 1.75 and here I'm I'm using the calculator because I'm not that smart uh, if we had more time we could we could certainly do this by calculate or by hand but let's not so we have 3 times 1.75 squared minus that minus 4. So I'm just plugging in 1.75 into my function to figure out what my y value is there. 1.6875. So that's my point. And I need to find my derivative. Well, the derivative at 1.75 equals 6 times 1.75 minus 2 using my derivative equation. Um, so this 6 times 1.75 again going back to calculator 6 times 1.75 Seven five minus two is eight point five. So we get eight point five minus two. Oh no, just eight point five because that's what um, I already did the minus two. So that's my derivative. So my line would then be eight point five times x minus 1.75 plus 1.6875. And that, that's better approximation for a line. That's that's centered. Um, so that's my line that's about right here. That's that line right there. And I want to find out what when that line is zero. Because when that when this is zero, that's when that's going to be the approximation for when my actual function is zero. So let's set it equal to zero. So subtracting over and dividing by the slope. So we subtract it over the y value divided by the slope and then move the x value over. And that equals. Um, are zero and, and this is my second iter iteration and, and that's enough for now so you get the point we're going to start another video in a second 
and define the recursive process.